Hey guys. I don't know if you can see me yet. Let's double check, make sure it's working. Can everyone see and or hear me? <laughs> hey guys, I'm Mike. I'm one of the uh, developers for Last Epoch. Uh, I've been on the project since pretty well the start. Not quite, but you know, pretty close. And uh, we're gonna do a little, little run through here. Are my system sounds coming through? Did you guys just hear a bunch of pings? Volume is quite low. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Super professional. We do this all the time. Definitely not the first time we've done this. Okay. Well, we had a poll, and Primalist was the clear winner. So we are going to make a Primalist. Uh, I am accepting name suggestions for what we're going to call our Primalist. So if anyone has any 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 ideas on what they'd like my primalist to be called? Fenton, Chester, Stinky Bear. <laughs> primalist is fine, <laughs> Rhymer. Oh, that's not the name. You know, we're gonna do Fenton. Fenton! I am the primalist. Mm. The link between the people of my tribe and the spirits of the land. I was returning to my home in Heoboria from a hunt for mitified flames and destruction arrayed by the forces of Ryan. My home and my family had been turned to ash. The call came for the truck. Yes, I will reduce the cam size. I've got another scene here with a small camera. I just thought I'd start with the big one, you know. Now we get to know each other a little bit better. In search of answers from the mother goddess and the strength to take Rogue Wen. We're going to do a little time traveling for uh, Rogue Wen. And go back in time. And you can ask that question. <laughs> Get our, get our wolfy boy out here. Go! Fight for me! He'll catch up when he's ready. It's funny, I've played the uh, start of the game a lot of times. Uh, I figured we start fresh a little bit here just because... Um, uh, we might do a few more of these and could build a character together and you guys can help me decide what to do a little bit, maybe? But, uh, later parts of the game, you know, less number of times through the end of the game than the start of the game. Especially when we were doing, uh, conventions before, you know, everything. <laughs> uh, the, um, we'd always take the, just the start of the game to conventions and, uh, we always, when we were prepping that build, play through it dozens of times to make sure it was smooth, so. Yeah. Let's see what we got going over here. Let's find this chest. Oh my god, what's in it? Ooh. Eh, a few things. Not useless. What do we want? Do we want. Well, let's keep the sword. Charge! Restarting Masochist. I'm not going to play Masochist Llama. It's, it's, uh, it's misrepresentative of actual gameplay. Uh, especially if there's new people here that haven't had a chance to see this before. Um, if this is your first time seeing the game, uh, we don't want it to, uh, Maybe scare you off a little bit from being just too difficult. Let's grab a shield just in case we need one later. 
I love the new art. The new the new shield art is just so great. It's um, been coming in pretty steadily recently, and it's oh, I'm in love with it. Let's go to the shrine. What could it be? Oh yeah, that's what we need. SSF. Look at all that gold. So much of it now. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. All right, what type of build are we doing? I, I don't know how to do polls really quickly and live other than just like straw polls, but if people want to uh, have an opinion on what type of primal they're gonna be making, please feel free to shout at me what you want and I'll, uh, I'll take some suggestions from the crowd. Totems, Tempest Strike, Minions. So they're all the same thing so far, really. I could do a, I could do a, um, like using the new Warcry totem version in Tempest Strike. That could be good. Okay, we'll 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 plan for some attunement here early on. Hey guys, can we be friends instead? Nope. Okay. I don't know if I should be going through the storyline slowly, like reading everything or not. Um. Oh, also, you know, nice shirts here. In case anyone uh, wants to see what they look like, that's what that, that's what that looks like. We've uh, we got some some pretty cool stuff coming these days. Also got a nice little hat up here. Mmm, perfect. Yes, I am playing standing up. Um, I recently, I, I about two and a half years ago now, almost, yeah, about, almost three years ago now, I was uh, in a contest to sit down the fastest. Uh, I was completely sober and definitely was not at my bachelor party. Um, and I broke my tailbone. And it never really healed properly. So I... Uh, I have a standing desk now. I saved up and I got a really nice standing desk. It goes up and down on its own. It's gorgeous. I hate the way hats look at me. <laughs> I think I need some way to get chat up on screen so I can uh, see it while I'm playing instead of constantly looking over. This Every time I do this, this is me looking at chat. Come on, swipe. I want to swipe. <laughs> Fun fact, when the we did the first Primeless model before this one, the one that looked really kind of janky, uh, it actually was modeled after a picture of my face. And that's why it looks so terrible. <laughs> you Come on. I bring you fire. Why so long cooldown on leap? It's um most movement skills are gated by either um mana or uh cooldown specifically to uh prevent that like bounce 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 around the screen. Um and then the decision on which one is, like if it's using a mana gate or a cooldown gate, is usually uh, a, a class distinction. So most of the um, mage, like, well teleport at least, was mana gated because, originally was mana gated, 
Um, because it's such a more heavily mana focus in the class in general. You can get you can get cooldown reduction in a lot of places to speed it up, but we really want to avoid that. I mean, if you're doing this all the time, just bouncing around, it would look kind of weird, especially on streams. You know, it's it's also a thing using it tact tactically is uh, important to use it to engage, use it to withdraw. Foam asks, what's your favorite class? My favorite class personally right now is the Rogue. Um, mostly just because it's the newest and we've spent the most time on it recently. Um, I am a really big fan of the Mage in general. I was kind of hoping you guys would pick the Mage today, you know, just secretly. Um... Yeah. I like them all, though. There's there's really things I enjoy about all of them, which is nice. Um, usually it's a specific skill that I've worked on that I really like. Um, I am actually a big fan of Tempest Strike, even though it's not necessarily the most powerful skill in the game. Um, but it's really unique in the way that it's been made and what it does. It's th things that are unique I really like in general. Yes. Ooh, scroll. Chat did not start. Scroll. God, Who are you? Hmm, what? Hmm? What am I doing? Terror, watch over you. Come on. Gohan, Come with me. I gotta remember that I, I can't... I guess we're not monetizing anything, so I can sing anything, can't I? Honestly, my singing's probably not good enough to trigger anything. <laughs> What is your day-to-day -day role at EHG? I am a senior developer, um, so day-to-day -day for me is a lot of different things. Um, right now, um, like some like the short short answer is coding. I sit in front of a text editor all day and write words that somehow make stuff do things. Um, most of the things like UI hooked up, uh, that's usually me. So if there's a UI bug, that's normally my fault. Um, there's, yes. I, I do a lot of the stuff with, regarding skills. Um, there's lots of people that help with that, so it's by no means just me. Um, and I don't design any of the UI stuff either. Nothing's really a one-person thing. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of skill implementation, um, general hookups for interaction with UI, a lot of stuff like that. Um. Yeah. You guys prefer the slow phase gameplay, and then we and then we just got lunge and shift and the quite spammable movement skills, to so make leap, leap the same as well. Yeah, there's um, you you have to take into consideration the the whole class as like a theme on the class, the other tools it has, all those sorts of things. Um, Primalist is generally a more beefy, takes a little bit longer to do things, a little more methodical. Oh yeah, that new icon for swipe. So nice. And the VFX for it. <sighs> that snuck in. I didn't even know that was happening until it was already in. <laughs> oh, won't let me jump down? There he goes. It's interesting, so you can see a little bit of what's going on in the background. There's, like, they won't let me jump here, but it will let me jump here, because the distance to travel is short enough. Are there plans to bring uh, Shaman and Druid into 2021, or they stay dated for so long? Yeah, I mean, there's... I, I don't think I'd consider any class done. I don't think I'd consider any class really done for a long time. Uh, to come even there's there's always gonna be new things that we want to do with them there's always gonna be new things that we want to add to them and um we, we're always we're always looking at what class do we want to work on next what do we want to really focus on we found especially in the rogue patch when we built the rogue all together as one cohesive thing like we we, we built all of the rogue skills 
um, over the course of that patch. There wasn't like well, there there was some lead up, but we scrapped basically everything and redid the rogue patch, all the rogue skills together at once in that one patch time. And I think it really shows uh, in the quality of those skills when they first dropped. They were all really good. They felt awesome together, and there was there was this feeling of these skills were designed together because they were. Um, so we're we're, we're going to keep looking at that sort of thing because um, designing skills together makes them feel better. And uh, so hope, hopefully we'll get um, and when we do a rework, it'll be sort of a bulk thing in one class together, just so it feels a little bit better. Sometimes there's just things I haven't seen in a while, like this this background down here, the void texture that's on there, looks really nice. I haven't noticed that in a while. How are the volume balances feeling? Uh, quiet, loud, I know game sounds are probably pretty low right now. We've got, uh, do you play any other ARPGs from Rotten Gamer? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't have a ton of time these days, so I um, wouldn't say, ooh, that's right. Wait. Oh, yeah. That's right. I don't care if it's not great I'm using it. Um, yeah, I my favorite uh, go-to ARPG from... Forever is uh, Diablo 2, and I've played that's the one I played more than anything. Um, but, like, name an RPG, I've probably played it type thing. Uh, same goes for most of the people on the team. That's how most of us got involved with the game, was just the love of RPGs in the first place. And, yeah, so Diablo 2 would be my uh, favorite one forever. And, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, awesome. nostalgia grows up, what you grow up playing is something you love. Um, I haven't had a ton of time to play it recently, but I have played it as recently as a year ago. Woo! Have I tried Project Diablo 2? I haven't. Uh, one of my good friends uh, actually started playing that about about a month ago. And he had he had good things to say, so. Um. Those, those, all those mods, uh, Project Diablo 2, uh, Path of Diablo, um, <laughs> forgetting some names here, there's the one that completely overhauls it all as well, um, they do a lot of really cool stuff, and I hope that there is still modding support in, uh, going forward. Hey Heavy! How's it going? Did PoE have any influence on your development? I mean, tons of us have played PoE, and um, I mean, as with any game development, every game you've ever played has influence on it. Like, um, so like I, I've played a ton of Civilization games, and um, the game guide, uh, a big influence for how we built the game guide. And like how there's like links in it that take you to other things and things like that was a big influence. There was the um, Civilopedia in Civ, which is like completely a, a different genre entirely. But there's these like every time you play a game as as a game developer, uh, influences seep in, whether it's something that you want to do or something you want to avoid. It's really unavoidable. Just because you remember everything you do. <laughs> I mean, the same is true for every creative medium, like writing songs and that sort of stuff. Everyone gets influenced. So yeah, PoE is a huge ARPG that most of us have played. Um, so there's going to be influences. Yes. I love this, I love this quest. And I'm kind of zipping through it. And uh, Michelle can message me if she thinks I should slow down on that. But... Uh, that Art and the Gambler quest is one of my favorites. Expand this out a bit. Do you plan on adding monster diversity in the campaign? There's a lot of those void creatures, for example. Maybe like skeletons, undead, zombies, or anything to make it feel more different in each map zone. Yeah, I mean, um, there's new enemies getting added all the time. 
the uh, where they get added to the game really depends on where where it needs it most. The um, the people who work on certain things work on same on other things. So like the people who work on enemies also work on uh, like making skills for enemies work on making bosses. So if we're making a new boss for end game, maybe there's less time to work on uh, adding more trash mobs to. Uh, are we calling them chapters right now? Chap chapter chapter one or chapter two? Um, but yeah, there's there's always plans to add more diversity in enemies. That's th there's there's a really good thing that happens when you have recognizable enemies. So when people s come to a new encounter they haven't been to before, and they see okay, there's these certain shapes. They know there's these certain enemies, and there's that there's that recognition of what type of enemy am I fighting. Usually that's conveyed just through size, but also through um, just shape and being able to recognize them. But the thing is, like, there's a line where there's too many, too much variety. We're not there yet, for sure, but we will continue to expand them. And yeah, there's a lot of samey stuff that does happen in some places, but... Are there any plans for a class similar to the Witch Doctor? There's, like, we've we've gone through plans for so many different classes. Um, I, I'm not going to say yes or no. There's, uh, there's, there's influences of the Witch Doctor, because it's a game we've all played, and even something as simple as the uh, Acolyte um, and the Primalist, too. There's similarities there. There's certain skills, I'm sure. I can't really think of any right now, but I'm sure there's some similarities. Um, we don't have direct plans for what the next main class is going to be after this. We have ideas on, like, oh, this would be cool to add one day, this would be cool to add one day, but right now we're just looking to launch in uh, with, the, with the classes we have and with the masteries we've already announced. Woo! close. That's why I don't play Masochist. <laughs> okay, where am I going, guys? Going down. It's probably get just distracted enough that, uh, more talks on Monk Lake classes, please. Sure, I'll get right on it. I'm going to take a second to actually equip some gear, because, you know, we don't have anything. We're going to do this. And... Equip this. What else do we want? That's likely good. That's likely good. Let's equip that. Let's equip that. Guys, we got so much good stuff in here. Why didn't anyone tell me? He's probably all yelling at your screens, being like, equip some stuff. I guess my I have skill specializations to unlock too. So if any of you are new, unlikely, this is the skill screen. And uh, once we actually launch every single skill in the game, we'll have a specialization uh, that goes with it where you can master the class and uh, the skill tree that goes with it. What should be my first specialization, guys? I know we're gonna we're gonna do Tempest Strike in t probably in two levels, so we might as well wait almost. Let's just grab Ice Thorns. Actually, let's grab Swipe for now. Sure. Sure. Uh, probably don't want to dual wield. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, new skill. I don't think we're needing the heals. Uh, do you guys have any details on what potential fixes might be for minion AI, especially for my precious Necro? Yeah, there is... Um, there's some there's some work on minion AI coming down the pipe. Um, 
the people have noticed that the wolf behaves differently than every other minion in the game. Um, for a while now, the wolf has had a uh, unique AI on it that uh, we've been we've been testing out, and I think the re reception has been generally positive for it. I've really appreciated the difference, at least. Um, so we'll probably be rolling those out to most other minions. Uh, if you're talking specifically about the ability to control uh, minion a little bit more, like stances, uh, that sort of stuff, we're still looking at it. Um, I don't have an exact timeline or if we're going to do it for sure or not or what, but uh, yeah, we know that's something that's important and the minions don't always behave exactly as you want them to and there's different minions that you want to behave differently. So uh, right now, minion AI is sort of, I guess, procedurally done or it's sort of done on the fly, they're just given a list of abilities to uh, to use in a priority list. And so they say, like, oh, can I use the first one? Is there a legal target? Okay, good, I'm going to go use that on them. That's about it. Um, and we can we control it by ranges, and there's lots of other things we can do to make that feel smoother. But um, there's very little in the sense of, like, how aggressive is this minion? And... Uh, being able to change that on the fly and change what it does would be nice. Um, we had talked briefly about uh, implementing that in the UI uh, on the on the HUD doesn't really work. Oh right, I'm not really prepared for this, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, bud. Answering questions in chat in the middle of the fight. Feel my wrath. Could you talk about the next major endgame system that you're working on behind the scenes and what it brings to the game? I would love to. I really would. I'm sorry I can't. Um, there's, there's a lot that goes into them and rarely... Uh, if, if I start telling you things about it now, it could be completely wrong before it comes out, so I don't want to... I don't, I don't want to mislead people or anything like that, and... Uh, yeah. Can't say anything about it yet, I'm sorry. Love to. Do the mocks and leak stuff. <laughs> Shh, he's listening. Down here, come on, come on, let me go down there. Nah. I've been doing a lot of work on the uh, various parts of the UI recently. We've got a fantastic UI guy that is um, reworking a lot of. Yeah, Artem, you're you're my guy. You're my dude, Artem. So yeah, there's some, there's some big UI overhauls coming down the pipe, I can tell you that. I know there's been quite a few questions about that recently. Alright, what are we doing? We're selling some stuff here. I don't want any of these, I don't think. Minion throwing. Oh yeah, I've got a nice one. Yeah. Be, don't they? Yeah, it'd be nice, but if I go one handed, I'll keep that. I know there was a lot of uh, talk recently. Did I hit 10? No, I did not hit 10. 
a lot of talk recently on the um the various or the new the new changes to the UI here these squares um that that slipped in actually but uh don't worry don't worry we heard you guys that uh people are not really a big fan of the squares in general the good old auto pickup discussion eh yeah the, there's we, it's a discussion we do have regularly. So if you guys think we're just ignoring you, we're not. Don't worry. Um, we have that discussion with you guys as it's happening. It's a really difficult line to walk because there's this there's this feeling of is there just shiny stuff that's dropping and like I'm a I'm a vacuum cleaner that just goes around and sucks them up. Uh, and am I am I actually picking up real tangible physical items and keeping them feeling like a real reward is important I know mean, a lot of them are not that important and there's that there's a lot of different <laughs> sides to it for sure but um, we really want to hold on to it if we can and uh, it's another one of those things where once it's been granted it can't be ungranted very easily mmm go So, uh, we might be a little stingy on it, but uh, it's it uh, is for reason, not just for the feels. Impossible. Sorry if this is a bit of a weird question, but would you say the new DPS tooltip is accurate in showing the real damage as of this moment? No, it is not accurate, and it does not show the real damage. Um, it probably never will. The uh, the tooltips are really good at and really designed for being able to tell differences in uh, items that you're equipping. Um, specifically because there's a lot of nodes in the skill trees that we just can't show in the tooltips very easily at all. Um, probably should have an example of this off the top of my head, but I don't right now. Um... Rhymer, if you got an example of one that I can, uh, I, I can show that that has that would be great. I don't, I don't know a good example, but there's some. Oh, here's a good example actually. Um, conditional damage to rare enemies. So if a skill tree node, for example, says um, plus eighty percent additional damage or hundred percent more damage dealt to rare enemies, um, the tooltip has no idea if you're going to hit a rare enemy or not. So. Uh, there's that condition of, yes, I'm going to hit a rare enemy and I will do more damage, but the tooltip can't see that. So taking that node, um, it won't change the tooltip at all. It'll just, it won't touch it. Because it has no idea if you're facing a rare enemy or not. And there's there's a lot of things like that that it just can't really know. Um, there was another good example uh, that uh, I saw someone asking a question in Discord recently about... Um, if the, I, th I don't know if this was the example I used or the example they used, but if Lightning Blast cast by, oh my god, sorry, <laughs> if Lightning Blast cast by, uh, secondary, secondarily cast by skills like um, Disintegrate or uh, Surge had the right DPS numbers, because it was showing the actual DPS number from the Lightning Blast that you yourself would cast, not the DPS number from uh, what it is when it gets cast as a secondary effect from the spell. And that's because it's actually looking at your lightning blast. So there's, there's tons of little things like that that is... Uh, maybe maybe we'll get better at differentiating between those, but it is still using your, um, your lightning blast, but it doesn't take into account cast speed anymore. That's what it was. It was cast speed. There was a node that changed cast speed uh, negatively and it made the DPS only go down, but it wasn't representative of the DPS that went up from secondary effects from the node. Uh, yeah. There's a, lot, there's a ton of stuff that goes into the tooltips, guys. The DPS on that is something that we've been trying to do for quite literally years. <laughs> and um, the fact that it's in it all is a bit of a miracle. <laughs> uh, there's a note about pet DPS tooltips. Yeah, that's coming. They're even harder. Mostly because they have 
their own set of abilities, and that set of abilities can get uh, modified at runtime. As you summon them, they get given new abilities. Um, so figuring out how often they're attacking, uh, the effect of everything on those abilities is really difficult to do. Um, so we're, we're working on that. We've got a plan on how to do it, so it should be soon. Mana Strike, Spark Charges, Cast Speed. Yes, Kissing Iron. Thank you. That is exactly what it was. Just rambling about conversations I had on forums. <laughs> Woo! Just make a dedicated dummy uh, arena like... Uh, MH had to be good with it. I don't know what MH is, sorry. Um, yeah, there's... there's uh, People have brought up suggestions of having specific dummies that have that are like certain levels, have certain amounts of armor in certain uh, clusters, so have like a triangle of them and have eight in a circle and have a grid of them and so you can like check things. And, and yeah, we've, we've talked about things like that. Um, there's lots of features that we want to implement. Um... Quite often, it comes down to us figuring out <laughs> the, the the things that will give us the most, um, I guess, impact now. Uh, things that are the most valuable. All right, what are we doing here? I think we want to go in the down the sort of lightning route here to start. That's what I'm feeling personally. Maybe do this a bit of a mana generator at the same time. Let's let's do that. Probably don't need it right away, but that's okay. And I'm gonna need some more more stuff in here, aren't I? We are gonna do totem damage. I think I might start with that right now. Let's get our let's get our thorn totems going. Going up here for sure, right? Yeah. Go Tempest top left. Okay. Sure, Heavy. My wife has our kid at the park. She's sending me messages. That's the sound my computer makes when a phone is plugged into it. Let's we go. Any other questions I'm missing here? Will we multiplayer have group matchmaking similar to D3 has? Uh, unfortunately, I can't really answer any questions regarding multiplayer right now. Um, ooh, what's that? There's a shiny in there. Oh. Oh, um, yeah. We'll we'll have we'll we'll have more details on multiplayer coming up. Hopefully, pretty soon. Is penetration part of the tooltip calculation? Yes, penetration is part of the tooltip calculation. Uh, how do you feel about new skill progression being slowed for end game? Do you think you'll change this in the future, or just adjust it more? Um, I, personally, I'm a really big fan of how it is. Um, I think you know what it could have been. <laughs> um, I think there's there's a lot of pluses on it. I think it promotes having uh, respects earlier in the game. Like the, I, I mean, I I just respect two of my skills, and I don't feel like there's any major negative impact on that. And having having that catch up and that slowdown at, at higher end really helps. Um, put a bigger tail on that progression of your character, which I think is a really big plus. So that's having um, having more time where you're like, oh, I leveled up, I'm still getting something out of this level up other than just a passive point. Because every passive point you get makes is is less impactful uh, as a like percentage of your total passive points than the last one. So like once if you have 10 passive points and you get one new one, it's 10% more passive points than you had before. Um, but if you have 100 passive points and you get one more, it's 1% more than you had before. 
now you, this is counteracted by you moving up the passive tree faster. Uh, you unlock new skills, you get access to new passives, but once you've unlocked all of the passives um, that you want access to and you're going back and putting points in lower nodes... Oh my god, I love that. This, this fight has evolved so many times and it's just wonderful. Um, it's so good. Uh, the... The, the impact of those passives is less and less as you get into the late game uh, because you are you're going back and you're picking up ones that are not in your like high priority nodes to get so we want to give you a little bit more of a reason to still uh, be collecting uh, to, to be to still be going after levels where you're still feeling that positive impact of oh I leveled up hooray I get this new thing so there's like, there's a lot of different ways we can do that with skills. We just put a hard cap on uh, ex on skills completely and and make it so that it's... Oh, trying to get him out of there. Oh, that's spicy meatball. And uh, yeah, we, we, we want to make that... So I'm, try I'm trying to talk and uh, make sense and do this at the same time. It's tough, man. Oh! Uh yeah. <laughs> no, guys, when he dies, you can stand in the fire. It's fine. I was, uh, I was that warlock that would life tap in the fire. Don't worry. There used to be a group there. There is a group here still. <laughs> Should probably take a second and distribute some points here and there. Let's get another question. I think I rambled enough on that last one. In the past week, I've noticed a lot of streamers slow down and show that they're dying when they are clearly out of mobs AoE. Any chance there could be a nice hit detectors? Correct with the damage output. Yeah, so the um, that's actually an interesting point. We've been uh, changing, or we've been looking at changing hit radiuses a little bit with certain things. Uh, there was the the conversation started when uh, uh, Rye Void Rye showed up, and um, it was because there's there's like a, there's a lot of big AOEs in that one, and so. We've, been talking about doing various things like simple things just where the maybe the AoE is a little bit bigger but the uh, the ring is less damaging on the outer edge um, and then making it a tiny bit smaller than how big it actually is so there's like your character has a radius that is it's it's basically the same size as you and then the radius of each ability is basically the same size of the ability. And sometimes that overlap is not... Like, there's a tiny bit of overlap because things aren't perfectly circular when they're hitting you. There's there's a little few tricks to make it be a little bit more performant. And sometimes they need to be a little more uh, forgiving at the same time than they are. There used to be a big mob back there. Uh, do you think the game lacks feedbacks when you stand in the fire? Yeah, clearly I just died to it. <laughs> um, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I think there's there's a lot of visual noise that can happen in general, and uh, the things that are the most important to be not standing in are probably the most important to be noisy. Um having that clear indication of when you're going to take damage when you're not going to take damage based on positioning is really important for sure. Um, and we, we do try and keep that as tight as possible. Short question. Healing wind tree soon. Uh, I don't really like healing wind, so, you know, it's not top of my list. fine. 
I think uh, I think a Terror's Blessing is a um, much better healing skill. I'm not sure we need to really. Um, we'll see what happens with it though. Uh, mainly referring to the main three ailments. Oh, scrolled away. Main three ailments. Can I pause this? Uh, mainly referring to the main three ailments not having too much different with each other, except for poison. Mm. The rogue, more specifically the blade dancer. Come on, I can do both at the same time. Um... And its skills feel incredibly well put together. Skills are synergistic and feel great to play. Are there any plans that other classes will be, uh, which were designated uh, a lot long ago, M Sentinel, up to similar levels of power and skill synergy? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that was a bit of a, I guess, obnoxiously short answer. Yes, the the. Um, we want every class to feel just as awesome as every other class. So we want people to be able to come into the game and say, um, what's the best class in this game? And the answer to be, what do you want to play? Um, so people are not necessarily... That was close. Um, picking the class based on what's the most powerful thing. I mean, there's always going to be some sort of meta involved, but we want there to be a... Everything feels good, everything plays good, everything is viable, you know, that's the dream. I think we can get there. Uh, we have opportunities especially with the uh, Mage and Acolyte to, uh, to really take a solid look at them as a whole. Uh, a little while ago, we restructured a lot of the Acolyte skills in which mastery they were involved with and um, which mastery they were going to be uh, going with for going forward with. And uh, I think it it laid some good groundwork for sure. Uh, where are you? One. Close. When you're revisit revisiting older class skills, uh, would you redo a few skills so each patch or rework an entire master class in one go? I, I'm not 100% sure yet. I would say there'll be times where we do one here and there and times where we do a big batch of them. I'm a big proponent of a big batch of them because of the success that happened with uh, the Rogue. And they were all together. It felt great. Um, introducing new classes such as uh, Falconer, Warlock, and Rune Master, those will come in all as one big clump. There, we won't be like, "Here's a Falconer with one ability." It'll be, "Here's a Falconer with four abilities or five abilities." What are we gonna use? Fire res. I mean, gotta do that, right? MTX when we've been uh, slowly working on MTX stuff. It's important that we get uh, the main game out first and running smoothly. Um, we also want to, it, w when we release some sort of MTX thing, we don't want it to be uh, here's a couple options. We want it to be here's a lot of options. Um, so we'll be we'll be rolling that out when it's ready. <laughs> That's kind of the answer to everything, isn't it? When it's ready. Yeah, that's nice. I feel like I should switch to one-handed here. It's nice move speed there. Yeah, sure. Nah. Nah.
I do like that. I do like that. Keeping those one-handers just in case I want to switch. Where, where am I going? Where am I going? It's this way, isn't it? Huh. Come on. We're gonna, we're gonna go up here. Yeah. This way? Yeah. Do we need these? Oh, I got two of these. What are you doing? We're not dual wielding. We don't need strength. We should probably get a little health. I am gonna go a bunch of totem damage, so let's, let's deal a little more of that. We are doing some spell damage. Need spell damage. Yeah, sure. Be gone! Is the current stun mechanical system you'll have any plans on adjusting in the future? Um, I mean, Lone Star, you know this is a, a bit of a loaded question because we, we adjust a lot of things a lot. Um, so I'm sure it'll get adjustments. Overall, I, personally, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think there are some pitfalls with... Um, so, like, for example, with the new endurance uh, uh, new endurance mechanic that just came out, which I think is really great. There was, I know we were talking in the CTs, there was a lot of um, incentive right off the bat to max your health specifically because, it, or max your endurance specifically because, sorry, get your endurance threshold higher than your health so that you would have less chance to be stunned. Um, I, I think stuns are... An important part of the game really being able to be in that state where you are um, either strong enough that you can take a stun and be fine or um, you're just avoiding the big hit so you don't get stunned in the first place or you specifically have enough stun protection that you don't get stunned as frequently um, having that bit of variance in how the flow of a fight goes I think is still important though and um, I know, I know sometimes it doesn't feel good to get stunned. Maybe having some sort of... Um, I'm kind of just coming up with ideas here, so who knows if any of this is going to happen. But um, maybe a boss that has a really high stun chance or has an ability that every time you get hit with the ability, the third time you get hit, it always stuns you. Um, maybe there's some sort of he does less damage after he stuns you or there's other elements in the in the map that impact that where you're um, getting stunned has negative impacts on your movement from for a while or there's some some sort of like there is a downside to getting stunned but it's not just a oh I got stunned and now I'm dead um, there's there's little things you can do to change to change that feeling and that experience but oh Overall, stuns are, I think, an important part of game systems like this, both in being able to stun things and being able to be stunned. What am I doing? We're going this way. From Trundle God 1. Yeah, I used to jungle Trundle all the time. It was great. Um, also, what are the things the devs are working on that are coming you are allowed to talk about? Hmm. I don't know. Someone tell me what I'm allowed to talk about. There's, uh, there's, there's always new stuff coming down the pipe. We've got, uh, there's new skills we're working on. I'm not going to tell you what they are just yet. Uh, we're working on, I'm right now working on a ton of UI stuff. Um, oh no, what did I just do? <laughs> Guys, I may have just crashed my game. I clicked on Discord for a second. I, I should not have done that. Definitely just crashed the game. Well, that's frustrating. Let's see if it'll come back. It's not going to come back. Oh. Okay. This is my desktop. Really exciting. Get this back up quickly. 
I am going to flip to this real quick. While I, I'm not right back. I am just going to do this while I log in. Let's see. Cut. There we go. And we're back. What? Nothing happened. Uh, on that note, when we're doing some big performance pass, yes, okay, there is a ton of performance stuff that's going on behind the scenes that we've been working on for quite a long time. I know we've been, if you've been with us for a little while, you've been hearing about it, we've been, we keep saying we're, we're working on performance, guys, we're working on performance, guys, it is happening, it is coming. Um, there's, there's a ton of performance stuff that's happening recently, so look, look at my character for a second. And when I cast this ability, there'll be an effect that appears around him. And it's that that like that ice that comes in before the ice shoots out. That's that cast VFX. Um now, without getting into the details of what was happening, basically it's that a little tiny thing is way more performant than it ever used to be. Um now, this doesn't have a huge impact on the game because it doesn't happen that often. And not a ton of enemies have cast VFX. You're not using eight abilities at the same time. So this isn't a huge impact on performance. Um, we have already seen slight improvements from this. Now, this system can be extended all the way to um, the little spikes that come out. It's a lot harder to, to do it for those. But um, the way the system was built, it was built to design to work with the little spikes that came out as well. So there's... Um, abilities like, for example, Avalanche that have huge, where is it, Avalanche, that have huge boulders crashing down, there's a ton of stuff happening. All of those things need to be uh, switched into this new system where it will be way better. And these, the, this last patch is a bit of a test to make sure that the, this system that we've done, because it's such a huge change, is stable, uh, and it's working well, and to catch bugs that are happening with it in this, uh, with this cast VFX right now. So that we're um, once we're happy with how this is working and we've worked out the bugs here, because uh, it's not as big a deal if you teleport and you see the fireball casting the effects as opposed to the te teleport casting the effects or something like that, than it is if you use avalanche and you see fireball. Like, there's <laughs> it's a big disconnect. So we're, um, once we've got all the bugs worked out, and it's working great, so I mean, hopefully soon, we'll be looking to extend that to more things. And, uh, yeah, so that performance is um, that performance improvement is coming. We are working on it very hard. Um, hopefully, it'll be, you know, right next patch. Hopefully, but you know, I can't say it's going to be next patch. So when it comes, it comes, and when it does, it's going to be great because um, it's the big thing. You, like every once in a while, I'll see a forum post that's like, I have a thirty eighty, and I'm I'm struggling at frame rate, and someone will be like, Oh, I've got a nine seventy, and it's the same frame rate. It's because it's got nothing to do with the video card, really. It's a CPU bottleneck, and it's something that's not really going to be um, improved by more hardware. It's going to be improved by better software. So we have to write that better software, really. And and we're 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 working on it, and it's definitely getting there. Yeah. So we're actually getting pretty close to the end of the stream here. It's just going to go for an hour. Um, if anyone has any, any more questions they want to get in. I'm going the wrong way, I think. <laughs> Where are you going? At this waypoint? This waypoint. Do you guys have any plans to expand the idle system and its variety? Whether it be through more affixes, capability of crafts, or something? Absolutely. We got some cool stuff coming there. Can't tell you what it is, but it's cool. Um, I think the big problem with the idle system right now, uh, is that the best, best way to build your idle layout late game, and this is a problem that, uh, so the idle system is very reminiscent of Diablo 2's, um, <laughs> what are they called? Oh my god. <laughs> All these names are so similar that I keep blanking on the... The R name versus what it actually is, or what charms. Thank you. Um, uh, two height charms. There was only one two height charm in that game ever worth using. Um, Torch. 
and everyone always had either all um, one by ones or three by ones and a row of one by one on the top, and and that that distinction of there's always a best way to to build this because of the shape of the inventory. Um, that's uh, ignoring the the fact that the shape of the inventory was you're fighting for it with your actual inventory space, but um, it was always advantageous to just stack up a bunch of three by ones across the bottom and then a row of one, one by ones on the top. And that's the avoiding that. I think is really important. So there's um, right now because we've got a four by four and we have some the best idols are one by four or four by one. They just get stacked all the way across or all the way up and down. And um, fixing that, I think, is would make the system a lot more interesting, especially. Um, specifically where you're you're looking into oh there's some one by threes that are important there's some one by ones that are important there's some two by twos that are important having that those those different shapes and having that configuration matter and be different and unique for different classes I think it would be a really positive change on uh, the idle system in general Impossible. so that's stuff that's stuff we're talking about. Are there already some work done for cosmetics to see what could be done and how, or is it something you'll start working on once the game is finished? We have definitely started working on cosmetics. Um, we have uh, 2D concepts uh, for them. We have some uh, 3D models built for some of them. We have uh, other stuff done for some of them. <laughs> So there's 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 definitely work that has been done on those. Um, it's something that we do in parallel with the um, rest of the game. So we um, we don't stop working on bosses because we want to work on NTX. We we've uh, created a second NTX pipeline for that because we 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 know that keep finishing the game is the most important thing. The NTX doesn't mean anything if the game's not done. So. Uh, I've heard mentions by other player streamers that sockets are planned in the future. Could you talk about sockets and what they'll go into them? Jewels, runes. Also, you could tell us what your plans with the upcoming bazaar and your trajectory and how you want multiplayer trading to work. Um, so I'm not really going to answer much of this question, but I just wanted to uh, address it because I probably missed a whole bunch of questions that people were asking things like this. Um, we, we've, we, we do have very... Um, very concrete plans for uh, some things like some of these things, and uh, they're they're still in the works. On like the, the overall plan is is pretty well concrete, and then we are still working out the details uh, until we have those details ready to really discuss and go in details with, like go in depth with, and be able to uh, show you how it's going to work. We're not really ready to talk about how it's going to work. Um, the best way to um, really get good feedback on these sorts of systems is to have them be testable, playable, at least viewable, and um, quite often speculative feedback on those systems can um, cannot be great. And uh, so we, we really want to wait until we've got uh, something more concrete to really show you. And we're not ready to show it to you yet. So um, that's the bizarre and multiplayer and all that, all, how all that stuff's going to work. We, I know we've, we've had some posts in the past on, um, on what our plans were for that. Um, a lot has happened since those posts went live. Um, so there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot that's still going on. Um, as far as sockets go, um, that's a whole system that is, uh, not finished yet. As, um, Many people have been around for a while. A lot of systems get changed a lot as we go through, and um, that one's gone through a few iterations. So, any any information that's been lingering from alpha, pre-alpha, that sort of stuff is probably not right anymore <laughs> on exactly how that's going to look. So I don't know if what people have heard or anything like that, but um, any information you are hearing about it is 
either speculation or out of date, unfortunately. Yes, show the community testers. Yeah, um, that's that's one of the ways we do test systems early. Um, there's things that get put into uh, CT builds that never make it to the light of day because they're not good. <laughs> yeah. they, they keep us in check. They tell us what sucks. This guy's a smashy boy. There we go. Okay, guys, we're actually over time. I'm uh, having a ton of fun here, though. I feel like this has gone pretty well. So, um, what we're going to do... We're going to get to the next waypoint. Where's the next waypoint? Oh, we'll get to the next waypoint. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? It's been a while since I've been here. Um, once we get to the next waypoint, we all hop off for the night. I'll get back to work. Instead of just messing about here. Will there be more opportunities to join the CT program? Yes, there will be. Um, if you are interested in joining the CT program, my advice is don't ask to join the CT program. <laughs> Um, if you are, um, a positive member of the community and we see you on the forums and on Discord and on Reddit and on all these places and you're helping people and being nice and not being a jerk and having insightful good feedback, we are more likely to ask you to join the CT program. Um, we don't have any scheduled intakes right now, but, um, just keep being awesome. And, uh, yeah. Sorry, CT program community testers, yes. Oh, that's what I get for looking away. Come on. <laughs> Not being a jerk, how'd Lava get in? It's a good question, McLaughlin. <laughs> Cat toast. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's go, boy. Uh, we're gonna go up here. Yeah, that's what we want. Here we go. Here we go. We're walking. This show is mostly walking. Great show. This show is not mostly walking. Mostly walking is fantastic. <laughs> this is what happens when I just start staring at chat. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm not getting to the last but next my point. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I need to figure out a way to get uh, chat up on screen. There's like I I have chat and my screen on the other screen, so I could be looking at it, but I just get tunnel vision. Someone who streams a lot, come give me lessons. Boop, 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 boop. Don't need that. I feel like I'm going to switch to a one-hander, so I've just like keeping all the one-handers, just, you know, I'll look through them later type thing, but I've been enjoying the two-hander so far. The trick is just to ignore chat. <laughs> uh, more dev streams. You're watching me struggle is much fun. Yeah. Uh, I had a blast today, guys. Um, I hope you did too. Uh, I will likely be doing this again. We'll be uh, 
talking about this with the uh, social people and uh, see if they think I should do it again. We'll uh, likely continue the same character if we do. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be, if, if, we, if we do keep doing these, same time next week type thing. I think this is a good time. I know it's a little late for all of you in Europe, so if you are here from Europe, thanks for joining us. Um, and if you were still at work in, on the West Coast, I'm sorry. This uh, will automatically go up on Twitch for uh, 14 days, I think, by default, and we'll look at seeing if we can pull it down to put it up on YouTube or whatever. Um so I, I did see some people in the forum were requesting to be able to see it afterwards. Um, yeah, that's about it. Just gonna go to nice, nice little ending screen here. This was thank you to Rhymer for all of the graphics that you saw today because those have been great. Uh, I appreciate everyone for coming out. And uh, had a ton of fun. <laughs>